So I thought I'd update you on how my sterilizer is working. I had uh, actually a setback. I said in my last video that I needed to make sure that the plastic didn't melt. And overall the plastic, uh, the integrity of the plastic uh, tote is fine. What, I, what did happen however is two of the metal stands actually uh, melted right through the tank. So now the the, the metal, uh, the steam coil is kind of tilted and the bulkhead's kind of twisted right here. There's just like a little lip, but the edge of this bulkhead is actually intact. So what has happened is that the, the plastic, the only reason why the, the steam coil melted right through is that the weight and the, the fact that the metal is is a great conductor of heat. The weight just basically pushed and melted right through the bottom of the tank. So I was trying to figure out kind of a good direction to go. And I was talking to my buddy Brad Coons in Ontario and he mentioned how ceramic doesn't conduct heat at all and how actually the space shuttles are, are they use ceramic because it's such a, a great material that doesn't actually conduct heat. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna get some ceramic tiles and I'm gonna put that just underneath the, uh, the legs of the steam coil and that's going to solve the problem of these bases melting through the tank. So I, I mentioned that this tank is a prototype design. Um, another thing I didn't know is if this lid was gonna be able to handle the heat because I wasn't sure actually if this was poly polypropylene as well. And for the most part, this lid is fine. Clay had mentioned that when he removed the lid, it was really flimsy, but everything seems fine there. So I, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the uh, the rope gasket that we use, and that's going to make a nice seal. And the fact that the lid is going to probably warp over time, we're going to want to ratchet strap the lid right on onto a seal, and that should work great for us. I think the the integrity of the tank is going to work great. The only problem that I have right now is that the the metal coil melted through the tank as, as I told you so that, that's gonna be the next thing I'm gonna patch patch up the holes with some silicone I don't really care I just want to make sure that I can get this working and then I will duplicate this when I'm when I'm satisfied so we're probably I was looking at getting some more steam coils made tomorrow but I'm probably looking at doing at least two or three more test runs just to kind of see how this is working. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and probably get better insulation as well. I think the, the concrete panels are great, but I think if we have better insulation, this tank is probably gonna heat up a lot faster. So that's the uh, poly, polyiso cyanate, I believe is how you pronounce that. And we can get some panels uh, probably from our local hardware store I just need to look for that and it's gonna be probably about two inches thick maybe three and that's probably gonna insulate this a lot better I'll probably still wrap it with the tarp I like the idea of keeping the rain off of the insulation um, another thing that I should note is we removed the insulation from this tank and that's that's how we get a faster cool down and I thought I thought this tank might take three or four days to cool down, but to be honest, it probably only needs about 36 hours when we remove the insulation. And that's with our three layers of wood chip bags. So when we do the, the sawdust bags, we're probably gonna get about five layers, I think. So, you know, I'll see how fast that cools down with that. But as of right now, I've been actually really pleased with how fast this tank cools down because we removed the insulation after sterilization. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna empty this tank today and I'm gonna show you guys uh, the damage. We'll assess that, but I think I should be able to patch it up and put this tank into a second test run and hopefully have a successful trial coming up. Like I mentioned in my previous video, none of this stuff usually works the first time. That is just the nature of innovating and designing. And to be honest, I've had a lot of failures to get to where I am here today. So this is just another another, another step 
in in the process of fig figuring all this out and that's that's the cool thing about me sharing on YouTube you guys get to kind of evolve throughout the years as as my business changes and hopefully you have you know one step ahead of the game if if you like the direction that I'm going and, and hopefully there's something you can learn from from all of this um, all of this takes time and money and experience and really it's just a lot of patience to kind of push forward and come up with a working working idea and there's lots of examples of that on my farm so right now I just need to figure out how the sterilizer is going to work and I still think that this plastic tote is the way to go so anyways I'm going to work on unloading this and I'll show you guys the damage of the, the bottom of the steam tank where the coil fell through Okay, so I got the bags out and we're just going to assess the damage here. As you can see, this the steam coil has melted right through the bottom. And it just started here as well. And the only reason why it didn't get through is the bulkhead here would have gave it a little bit of resistance. And as you can see, the there's a gasket in between the bulkhead and that was enough to stop the heat transfer so this is actually has not been affected by the heat at all and the tank itself is fine so what I think I'm gonna do is get some core plast and cut out these little squares and silicone all around there fill that hole in with some silicone and just just seal it with a core plast seal and I know coreplast is really thin and it can handle uh, uh, steaming temperatures so it's not going to melt and this will be a good way to patch this tank and then we're going to do another few trials and just make sure that there's no leaks and like I said moving forward I'm going to source out some white ceramic tiles that are a little bit bigger than my patch job and these little metal bases here they're going to sit right on the ceramic tiles and that is going to that is going to prevent the uh, the heat from from pushing onto the plastic and ceramic is not actually going to uh, absorb that heat at all so it's going to be a great way for, for there to be no heat transfer and the plastic will not will not be damaged by the the hot steam coil as uh, as it heats up and really the only reason why this punctured through is there's about 700 pounds with all the bags in here and with the the hot pipe and and the weight of the bags it really just pushed right through the tank as as the pipe heated up it basically just like soldered right through and then you can even see some stress cracks around there as the pipe was just pressing pressing down into the tank So I just got back from the hardware store and I picked up these ceramic tiles. Got a couple different sizes, 
wasn't entirely sure what I'd be using. And I'm not entirely sure if uh, if I should be maybe reinforcing these with silicone or maybe just loosely put these in. You know, I'm not really sure the best way to do this because these are obviously fragile and they could break. But I'm thinking like if I can just put them in place and then take them away when I'm not using the sterilizer, that might be the best way. Or I could secure them in place with silicone. Uh, I was going to use some coreplast to patch the hole, but I think, uh, I think I'm going to use some foam insulation. I think that's probably the way to go. So I had to use a stepper bit to, to get this uh, steam coil out and just make the hole a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking I'm going to just fill this whole gap here with foam insulation right here as well. And, and then probably just, just cut it flat and flush and then possibly a little bit of silicone on the inside of the tank just to keep moisture off of that foam insulation and then just use a putty knife and just make it really smooth and I think I'll just put the tiles in place when we're sterilizing and then the steam coil will just gently sit on the ceramic tiles and they shouldn't break that's that's the assumption we're gonna make so I'm gonna repair this tank and get this all looking the way I want and then I'll talk to you guys in a minute A couple things to note is that when I was unloading the tank, I noticed that the bags weren't vacuum sealed as much as they normally are. A couple things are probably happening here. With our normal steam tanks, we get about we get five five layers with wood chips, seven layers with the master's mix when we're using the hardwood fuel pellets. And you get a lot more compression and the bags are the weight of the bags are pushing down on each one, plus the lid is just kind of like keep, keeping everything clamped down. And we often put these screens, these metal screens here, just to add a little bit more weight. And then as they heat up, the bags kind of get compressed and all that excess air gets, gets uh, squeezed out. And then, and then we have a really nice vacuum seal bag. When, however, with this tank, we only do, uh, we're only able to fit three layers and the top layer we didn't put anything on this time and the bags were a little bit loose. So it's probably not a big deal, especially because it's the winter right now. There's really not too much contaminants in the air, but it's something that I'm probably gonna need to figure out. We're probably gonna have to either get like a sheet of plywood and just kind of make it really tight where the lid is and then when we ratchet strap the lid down it kind of presses down on the bags that'll be the first step uh, another thing is that we did take the insulation panels off of this tank to get a rapid cool down possibly this is affecting the bags as well and that would definitely be a negative thing for us during the peak summer i would i would assume that if we're rapidly cooling down these bags we're probably going to be releasing or introducing unclean air into the bags as that hot air is forced out so that's something that i don't want to i don't want to have that scenario and i i don't think a rapid cool down is a big deal but but if it is that just makes the case for we want to roll these bins into a cool down room. We're talking about doing a container right here. and We'd be venting the exhaust of the HEPA air from our lab into that container. And then at least, at least these bins are going to be around clean air as they're rapidly cooling down and not outside. So all of these things are stuff that I'm aware of and I need to kind of prove it this year, which is why we're just doing this on a small scale. We're still gonna be relying on these tanks for most of our production. And at most, we're gonna have three of these tanks kind of in production. And then we have to make notes and kind of, and kind of compare with different batches compared to this tank and make sure nothing contaminates. So just to kind of put everything in perspective, how none of this is really simple. And because my production is so big, or at least for me it is, you know, I, uh, uh, these small changes can have dramatic effects on the profitability of my business if stuff goes wrong. So you need to be really careful. 
Another thing I want to note, guys, is this uh, K-Type probe. It has a uh, it has a a gap all the way around here, which the heat has kind of started opening up. So I'm probably going to wrap these with electrical tape just to make sure that nothing uh, nothing malfunctions. Also, the the lid squeezed the cable quite a bit. So I think when we put the the rope gasket on here, I'm going to leave a very small gap where this cord just kind of fits through and then when the lid compresses, this won't get squished as much. And the rope will probably just kind of fill in the cracks as the lid gets squished down. So anyways, that's the direction we're going right now. Keep you guys posted. I'm sure I'll have a video on something uh, that we've done with this in the, in the week to come. I have a new student arriving this week. I just said goodbye to AJ. AJ, thank you for all your hard work on the farm. I really enjoyed having you here. I always, I always get to know my students on a real deep personal level because we work every day and uh, I really enjoyed AJ being here. So anyways, thank you so much for being part of my farm for your week. I look forward to the next student arriving tomorrow. I'll introduce you to her. She's gonna be, uh, she's gonna be awesome. I, I think I've, I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting uh, Bianca. Um, I, for some reason, I can't remember where she's from. I think she's from Colorado. I'm gonna have to look up the email. I haven't uh, talked to her for a few months, but I'm always excited to to meet new people. So we got another student coming. You guys will see her on the farm. I'll keep you guys posted on this tank and. Hopefully uh, you guys have learned something and hopefully you're inspired to do something just like this. We'll see you in the next video.